Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're hitting some pre-earthquake signals. We'll see an incredible story of biological toughness. But the biggest story today is that which we've alluded to in the last three days. Big sunspots are returning. Let's get started with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find the biggest eruptive activities were on the north, near the polar crown. A destabilization of one of the filaments launched a trailing half of it, still more remaining. Sunspots and the big equatorial coronal hole are there too. Let's break these down, starting with the rise in solar flaring. Nothing big yet, but we're up off the floor and cruising in C-class flaring range. Anemia has turned to a low rumble as the big sunspots begin emerging over the left side, the incoming limb. Visibility still pretty minimal, but by tonight or tomorrow, we're going to get a good look at this first contestant. Quick look at the filament rip up north, definitely a destabilization and lift eruption, but in the wake of it, the bulk of that filament remains. It is still there and now it's going to face Earth tonight. It's the eruption threat until the sunspots turn in and we do have another large plasma filament riding to the south of that coronal hole. This one looks more stable for now, so plasma filament eruption threats, a coronal hole stream is coming and the big sunspots are returning told you to enjoy that quiet while it lasted, space weather expected to return in December. Top quake of the day was luckily out in the middle of nowhere, Alaska. Nearest town did feel the shaking, but it was far enough away the damage was minimalized. Good news there. Two studies up next following our tracking of the 15-year birth and growth phase of pre-seismic signal science, and it's the best kind here, the geomagnetic one unmistakable and in my mind the best pre-earthquake signal to be used for future forecasting. The other paper hits VLF waves which happen to be generated by those magnetic field changes and excitements before the quake. The reason I prefer these is because they can only happen from pre-seismic action whereas the very strong ionospheric precursors could technically also be a space weather event. The top story today is bananas. Yet if you remember how water bears, tardigrades, survived space on the outside of the ISS, moss just did it too. That's right, moss, and get this, they spent nine months in the exterior condition. Over 80% of the spores survived and were able to reproduce. Panspermia hypothesis just went off the charts with the extremophile profile of those spores. Folks, tomorrow is winter tour event number one, Omaha, Nebraska. Still time to grab tickets at the link below or to one of the other four tour stops. Guys, Cat is cocked and loaded in the Observer Ranch store this weekend for the Black Friday, Small Business Saturday through Cyber Monday deals. In the Observer Ranch store, automatic, 20% off. Online, 10% with this code. While the PDF copy of our textbook is our best deal in my mind, maybe you want to snag one of the very few remaining physical copies of the textbook, link below. Or grab an Observer Ranch membership. You get discounts, your name on the founder wall, two free nights at the ranch, access to the health center while you're here, and you are supporting the children's educational events, the library, and the major scientific events at the ranch. We greatly appreciate your support. Again, all links are down below. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.